Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, president of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about our new plugin, Flickr Free. Try and say that uh, three times fast or ten times fast. Flickr Free, Flickr Free. Um, we're going to talk about using it on a couple different types of footage. It really excels at both time lapse and slow motion footage. Uh, it solves different problems for each of those types of footage. And we're going to start off with time lapse. And so let's dive into that. So you can see here, I've got some time-lapse clouds. Actually, this is part of a larger image, as you can see here. Uh, and if we play that back, I'll do a RAM preview, play that back. You can see that the ocean's moving super rapidly in addition to the flickering that's happening in the sky. And since I find this to be really distracting, uh, we're just going to show the sky portion of it. So I'm going to zoom back in to my comp at 100%. That's going to show us just the clouds. And now if I ram pre preview this, we can see the flickering pretty clearly. And this happens because when you shoot time lapse, usually what you're doing is locking down the aperture and letting the camera vary the shutter speed so that you can shoot for a long period of time without it fading to black. Now, if you're shooting in the middle of the day and you're just going to be shooting for a couple hours in the middle of the day, uh, you probably don't need to do that. You can probably set both the shutter speed and aperture and lock both those down, uh, put it into manual mode. But if you're shooting a sunrise or a sunset or something like that where the lighting conditions are likely to change, you're going to have that shutter speed be variable. And what happens is it results in the flickering that you're seeing here. And this particular shot has quite a bit of flickering. It's pretty intense. And we're going to use Flicker Free to get rid of it. So we are going to go down to Effect, go to Digital Anarchy, go to Flicker Free, and that's going to apply it. You can see that by default, the time radius is 8. For most time lapse, I like to set this to 10. Eight's a pretty good value as well. It'll render a little bit faster than setting time radius to 10. Time radius is the number of frames around the frame that you're at that Flickr Free is looking at. So we're going to be looking at 10 frames to determine what the average brightness is of the frame that we're looking at. So if you find this to be too slow, you can start dialing this down to maybe 8 to 6. Realistically, you don't want to go much below 4. That's really not giving Flickr Free enough info to really remove the flicker. And so in this case, I'm going to leave it at 10. Uh, the sensitivity, you usually don't have to adjust too much. For time lapse, it's 30. That's a pretty good value for it, uh, for slow motion stuff, which we'll get into shortly. Uh, a little bit lower value, like around 10, is better. But where the flicker is happening on the entire image, a sensitivity of around 30 is usually a pretty good value. And the type is set to time lapse. You'll notice that as we switch to these different algorithms, the presets up here change. So as I switch back to time lapse, it's going to switch it back to sensitivity of 30. Time radius of 8, which I'm going to change to 10, and we're good to go. Now, the All Channels checkbox means that Flickr Free will look and process each channel separately. Sometimes this results in a better deflickering. Uh, it does come with a uh, time penalty. It will render slower. Not significantly slower, but uh, it's going to add a little bit to your render time. So I tend to leave that off unless it becomes clear that uh, with it off, the deflickering is really not all that great and I need to try it on. Uh, threshold only works with the slow motion alternate algorithm, so we don't have to worry about it here. And the detect motion allows Flickr Free to analyze the footage and figure out what things are moving and hopefully create a better deflicker in that process. Now, sometimes this can cause artifacts. You may see a little bit of haloing. In many cases, that's not a big deal. 
it only happens on a single frame, you're not really going to notice it. But if it happens on multiple frames, you might want to try turning this off and see if it gets rid of it and you still have acceptable deflickering. But we're going to leave it on for this footage. And so now if I RAM preview this, you can see it's done a really nice job of removing that flicker. Now you may notice that we get one big flash right in the beginning, like right here. Uh, and that is because the sun comes out from behind the cloud. So this is actually a flicker that we want to keep because if we zoom out, we can see that the flicker comes from a change in intensity of the sun. And so not all flicker is bad. If the flicker is really coming from a change in lighting conditions, that's okay. If you have really fast moving clouds and they're really going in and out of being in front of the sun, that type of flicker is all right. But the flicker we're trying to get rid of is just from the exposure variation of the camera. You can see that the sun is not really going in and out of the clouds fast enough that you would see normal flicker. It's really more of a slow transition and in intensity. And so most of the flicker is coming from the change in exposure. And as you can see, that's not really happening anymore. The clouds are looking much smoother than they were without flicker free on it. And we can turn flicker free off again, just to get an idea of what that really does look like. And you can really see that flickering happen on this footage, especially around the edges here and in the clouds. So that's the basics of using flicker free on time lapse footage. As you can tell, it's very easy to use. Most of the magic happens behind the scenes and we just expose the parameters that are really going to allow you to make a difference and not have a needlessly complex plugin. So very simple to use. Um, so now we're going to switch over to a slow motion shot and we're going to create a new composition here a Coca-Cola fridge. Now, flickering that happens during slow motion footage is usually very different than what you see with time lapse. With time lapse, it's usually a variation of the exposure, as we talked about, coming from the camera. And the flickering is all based on what the camera is doing. With slow motion, it's really a combination of what the camera is doing, how fast the camera is shooting. If you're shooting, say, you know, three, 400, 500 frames a second, and you're shooting under lights that have an electrical cycle of 60 or 120 frames a second, the flicker from the lights that's being caused by the electricity cycling up and down, which is what AC electricity is, alternating current. And that alternating current causes the lights to vary in intensity. And so, especially with tungsten lights, you'll see sort of this up and down that happens. And if you're shooting high frame rate, it's going to capture those ups and downs. And so you're gonna get flicker. The same goes for cheap fluorescent lights as we have in this refrigerator here. And if I play this back right now, you're gonna see that we get a lot of nasty flicker. And that's coming from the magnetic ballast in the fluorescent lamp. So what to do? Well, as you might guess, my recommendation would be to apply flicker free. And we're going to, in this case, we're going to select slow motion alternate. Now this is beta. Uh, we may change the names of these algorithms. It turns out that slow motion best is really only best about half the time. Uh, the alternate is really a great way of removing flicker from slow motion. And so that's what we're going to go for in this case. Uh, the time radius is six, which is pretty good. Uh, with slow motion, you probably want to go between four and eight. You can occasionally have problems with uh, ghosting artifacts, uh, especially if you crank this up to around 10. It really depends on how much movement is happening in the slow motion footage. 
And in this case, we have a fair amount of it with the camera and the door opening and whatnot. So we're gonna leave that at six. Sensitivity is set to 10 uh, because you'll notice that the flickering is only really apparent in some areas of the image. It's not the whole image. So setting the sensitivity down to a lower value is usually appropriate. Now, one thing to know about the alternate algorithm is it's the only algorithm that uses a threshold. So you can fiddle around with this to further fine tune the look of the flickering. And I'm gonna set this up to 20. Usually you wanna vary this somewhere between five and 30. And we're gonna leave detect motion on. Again, this can cause artifacts sometimes, so just be aware of that, and it may be something you can turn off depending on the footage. And again, all channels, since this slows the plugin down a little bit, I tend to leave this off unless it becomes clear that I need it. So now I'm going to RAM preview this. And you'll recall that the flickering was pretty extreme up here in the uh, ceiling and this part of the fridge. And so now when I play this back, you can see we've done a fantastic job of removing that flicker. There's still a little bit of noise up there, but for the most part, it looks much better than the original footage. And if I turn flicker free off, we can see what that looks like. You can see really just the flashing that's happening up here. And again, when you turn flicker free on, you just don't see that. There's still a little bit of noise up here, but for the most part, that flashing that we had with the original footage is now gone. So that's really all there is to Flickr Free. You just apply it to your footage, slow motion or time lapse. Select which algorithm you want to use. Depending on that, you'll get default settings for sensitivity and time radius. Fill around with those a little bit. They're very good starting points, and for most footage, uh, will probably work out well for you. And then just determine whether you need to turn on all channels. Fill around with the threshold, which only applies to the alternate algorithm here. And decide whether you want detect motion on or off. And one last thing I'm just going to touch on briefly is that if you have regular footage, that's not time lapse or slow motion or anything, it's just regular footage that's got a flicker problem, as is the case with this footage, which was shot on an iPhone, and we'll see what that looks like. And you can see very rapid fl flickering, probably caused by some sort of electronic noise in the iPhone. And what I'm gonna do is come up here and again, select flicker free, apply that. We're gonna use the settings for slow or regular motion. You don't want to use time lapse. And again, we're going to select the slow alternate method. And now we can see what that video looks like. Okay, and we'll play that back and you can see that that flicker is gone. And so as you can tell with the presets for slow or regular motion, you want to use one of these two algorithms for time lapse, you want to use that. So it's not just about regular flicker. Uh, you can have these cycling interference patterns and Flickr Free will get rid of those as well if you use the right settings. So that's really about it for this tutorial. Thanks for joining me. I hope you have uh, found it enlightening. Please download the demo and try it on your own footage. I think you'll be quite impressed by how easy it is to use and how awesome the results end up being. Part of how Flickr Free came about is uh, I've been doing time lapse for the last four or five years, um, doing quite a bit of it, and have been pretty unsatisfied with the Flickr removal tools that currently existed. And so that was the motivation to come up with our own tool for doing it. And we think we've done a great job with it. it certainly works for time lapse, slow motion stuff. So please try it on your own footage. I think uh, you'll be quite impressed. And again, thank you for joining me and see you in the next tutorial.